Hi, and welcome to the Heart of a Perfectionist podcast. I'm your host, Tegan Thompson. I'm a book lover, a chocoholic, and an INTJ living in a world filled with extroverts. I made this podcast to share my experiences and struggles as an introverted perfectionist and to bring the inner workings of an introvert's mind to introverts and extroverts alike. So grab a cup of tea and get comfortable. It's time to unmute. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Heart of a Perfectionist podcast. Uh, This is the third week of the Heart of a Perfectionist Black History Month mini-series, Um, and you know, as I mentioned in my previous episodes, the theme for 2022 is black health and wellness, um, which I absolutely love and am so excited about. So for each episode this month, I've been talking about a topic in health and wellness that pertains to black individuals and the black population. And this week, we'll be talking about the disparities in the healthcare field that directly impact the black population. I think this is really important to talk about um, because you often learn about, oh, like black people tend to have higher rates of um, illnesses and deaths and blah, 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 blah. And you're like, oh, they must just, like, not take care of themselves or whatever, right? But there's a lot of things that impact it and go into it, and I think it's really important to talk about um, for everyone to be able to learn about and educate themselves on. I think as black individuals, it's important to know how these things impact your own health. Um, And then for people who aren't black individuals, to kind of learn about these things and understand how, you know, the health care that you receive isn't the same as how other people receive it. And, you know, just being aware and acknowledging that and um, having open conversations about it, right? I think that's the most important thing is like learning about these things and educating yourself so you can have these open conversations and discuss them and help other people become more aware, right? So I kind of just want to start by talking about what are health disparities. I know that is a word, disparities is a word that isn't used very often, and so not everyone may truly understand what it means. So a health disparity is when there is a difference in one population's health compared to another that is linked to social, economic, and or environmental disadvantages that that population has. Um, And these populations adversely affected by health disparities can be based on, but not limited to the list I'm just about to mention, um, but they can be based on racial or ethnic groups, socioeconomic status, gender, age, sexual orientation or gender identity, cognitive sensory or physical disability right those are just a few things and there's a very very long list of um all the other things that are included in that but those are just some of those things that can create a population that is impacted by health disparities in a negative way right um so for the black population, I want to just talk about a few statistics that um, kind of shows and represents the health disparities that they experience on a a day-to-day and kind of just in their life in general. Um, And one of those things is that black mothers are two and a half times more likely to die from giving live childbirth compared to white mothers. And black mothers are 3.4 times more likely to die from live childbirth compared to Hispanic mothers. And um, I wanted to start with this statistic because first thing, yes, I'm going to compare a lot of things to the white population um, because 
In our society, white individuals are kind of the gold standard and they are often treated the best and receive the best care and services in pretty much everything, right? But I wanted to start with this because um, Hispanic mothers actually um, have better um, outcomes from childbirth compared to white mothers. So it's not that white people themselves are the only ones receiving better care, but in some areas, um, Hispanic, the Hispanic community or the Asian community, they are receiving similar or better care, right? And the second statistic is that high blood pressure, diabetes, and stroke all impact and result in more deaths in the African American population compared to the white population. Um, and they've actually done studies on these different illnesses. They've done a lot of studies where they do racial comparison in these um, different illnesses, right? Hypertension, diabetes, and stroke, and even heart disease and stuff like that. And they found that um, these higher rates are a result of things such as poverty, unemployment, smoking, or obesity even, impacting African Americans at younger ages compared to all others in the U.S., but specifically compared to um, the white population. And I think that's just really, really important to recognize is that, you know, a lot of these health disparities are a result of the environment that um, black children are exposed to at young ages and um, which is in and of itself a result of the kind of cycle of discrimination that has been placed on the black community, right? Um, black individuals are also 20% more likely to report suffering from psychological distress and 50% less likely to receive mental health treatment. And this kind of goes into the episode that I um, talked about last week. Um, and just like black individuals not having that level of comfort, being able to seek out um, mental health treatment, but then also kind of the stigma of mental health in the black community, right? And how that impacts black individuals. Um, Another thing is that African Americans have the highest mortality rate for all cancers combined compared to any other racial or ethnic group. And this one kind of really stuck out to me because I was like, okay, well, cancer doesn't really impact people's bodies differently based on their race. You might have different levels of um, aggressive types of cancer, right? Someone might have, um, let's say, breast cancer, and um, it's not as aggressive or it's not growing as fast as another individual who has breast cancer and their breast cancer is more aggressive and growing faster, which would impact them quicker, right? Um, but they haven't found that for um, African Americans versus um, other populations, right? Um, so it kind of just really stuck out to me because it's like, well, then obviously there must be something in the form of treatment and care that they're receiving that is resulting in these higher mortality rates, right? Um, and then the last statistic I'm going to give, um, I want to give because it pertains to now and it's not something that people can say, oh, it's been kind of growing and growing for decades upon decades and it was already really bad and so now we're trying to get it better. Um, but something that has recently occurred and um, is impacting the black community is that black individuals are at a higher risk of contracting COVID and dying from COVID compared to white individuals. This is something that, you know, the COVID virus just started impacting our society in early 2020. And, you know, 
to see that there's such like quick and obvious levels of disparity for black community is just really devastating to see to be honest um so those are just some of the statistics i have you can google all you want on the statistics there are a ton out there ton of research papers if you ever are interested in looking into them they are definitely very interesting i enjoy reading them and would encourage you to read them as well if that is something you're interested in um i just want to talk a little bit about why there is so much inequity in the healthcare field for black individuals and you know i believe this goes beyond the centuries of discrimination that black americans have faced and continue to face to this day um and i believe that there are a lot of other factors impacting the health disparities that black individuals see um, i'm only going to point out a couple of them but i think that there are a lot of them and you can definitely go and do your own research i'll always encourage you to do your own research because i don't want you to take everything I have to say and use it all as yours. I want you to kind of think and process it on your own as well and to have your own opinion on it. Um, but one of the first things is that black Americans are less likely to have health insurance compared to white Americans. And, um, you know, this is a really big factor in it, right? Because if you don't have health insurance, then you have to pay more for receiving health care and that is really difficult when um, you probably don't have the money for it you know um, African Americans tend to suffer from poverty more than white individuals do and so not having health insurance either puts you in a place where you have to pay a lot of money to receive health care services or you just avoid going at all and then you don't receive any health care services and now you put your health at risk right um another thing is that black patients benefit from having black doctors um and this goes for all um patients of color um, not just black patients but i'm going to talk about black patients specifically right um so they benefit from having black doctors and this is due to, you know, there being an obvious decrease in implicit bias and then also an increase in comfort. And when you have that increase in comfort and a decrease in implicit bias, you're able to have more open and honest conversations. You're able to address things and have your time spent in a more efficient way, right? Um, and that kind of all helps lead to better better health care services and um, health outcomes for black patients. Um, another thing is that the black community is rarely represented when their health status and programs related to their health status are being addressed and talked about and uh, revised and all this kind of stuff, right? And obviously this is a really big thing because how are you going to make decisions about a community's health status when you don't have anyone in that community to represent and vouch for them right so you have people who aren't in that community you have white individuals primarily and then you have like asian and hispanic and all the other um, different communities there and they're making decisions for the black community and that is really detrimental when obviously there are things that impact the black community in a different way than they would be able to understand or comprehend, right? And this just points to a need that we need more black leaders. And um, I know that this is probably going to be a slow change, but I really, really hope to continue to see more black individuals in leadership positions because it is what is going to help make those changes that we really need to see. Um, and then the last thing I have on my list is that these things that I just mentioned um, 
all result in lower quality healthcare services for black individuals, right? So they're receiving lower quality healthcare services, and that's going to result in um, negative and lower quality health outcomes. And that's why you see a lot of these health disparities. Um, and, you know, as a black individual, I really want to speak on all of this because I think it's so important to, you know, understand why these disparities are happening and why they are occurring and to have conversations about them so that we can strive for equity, right? We want to see more equity and that patients are receiving the healthcare services that they need based on you know, their background, you know, based on their race, based on their gender, based on their age, based on if they have any disabilities, right? You know, I think healthcare is something that is kind of generalized and there's, you go to medical school and you learn things and what you learn in medical school applies to every single patient you see. And I don't see it that way. I think every individual is their own person right and they are their own person but they have their own backgrounds they have their own um health stories and things that need to be thought thought about and implemented when you take care of that individual in terms of their health because they all impact their health um and when you don't look at those things and you just generalize it and you say oh because you're this race and this gender then there's this and we need to give you this right you don't like factor in the hundreds of other things that can be impacting their health and you could be making their health worse when your intention was to help them but that's not how the outcome happened right so um you know as someone who is working towards a career in the health field i think it is so important to just have these conversations even if you are not in the healthcare field, right, or if you don't know very much about it, I think having these conversations and learning more about it is really, really important. Um, and just educating yourself. I think education is like the biggest, biggest thing for anyone. Um, and to just constantly be striving to learn more, um, you know, whether that's about yourself and your background and the things that impact you, or if it's about other people and things you don't really know about. I think you should learn about both because they're both really important. You know, you want to make changes within yourself so that you can improve and grow, but then you also want to make changes in society and in the world, right? So that society and the world can grow together and improve. Um, so yeah, I think that having those conversations and just making people aware of the things that they may not realize are happening is one of the biggest things that we can do to help that happen. Um, so thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of the Heart of a Perfectionist podcast. If you enjoyed this episode or if you learned anything new, please go share it with a friend. And as always, have a great weekend, and I look forward to seeing you guys again next week on the Heart of a Perfectionist podcast.